Thank you. Uh, to start off with, I am a little bit concerned. I am new to the area and I looked online. I thought this was a comedy open mic. Uh, and I've got 15 minutes of very sketchy material. I did not realize that this is a family room. So I'm actually asking, honestly, I mean, should I just like sit and listen? Because it's great music. I love the music. But um, I don't want to just like get beat up <laughs> for offending people's children. Are we okay? All right, I saw some children walking around. They're your responsibility. Yeah, I, I will keep a scan on the crowd. Just raise your paddle if you're offended, and I'll take that under consideration. So let's keep a couple things in mind. First of all, this is my second time doing this. I did three minutes last week. Another thing is, I'm an old guy from Boston. Okay, so I am not a politically correct individual. I just have my own way of presenting things. So just. Relax. <laughs> okay. yeah. Old Boston guy coming at you. So I figured the first thing I'd like to do is start out with a compliment. All right? The compliment I want to get, and if, this, if you can own this compliment, go ahead and give yourself a little boot. All right? But uh, the compliment I want to give is for people who have the ability to deep throat a penis. I'm so impressed because every time I get done brushing and flossing my teeth, I brush my tongue. And every single time, I gag fucking hard, just two to three inches in with my toothbrush, and as soon as I hit the back of my throat, I'm like, <sighs> I got tears coming out of my eyes, and I feel like I'm gonna puke. And some people can handle five, seven, nine inches of dick, <laughs> all the way down your gullet? Congratulations, you're fucking superstars. I don't know if it's a God-given gift, or if it takes 10,000 hours of practice, but either way, I'm fucking impressed. <laughs> All right, now, I've, been, I've never been married, so I've never been divorced, but I did date a lot of divorced women. And after a while, I was seeing a pattern amongst this group of people, and I dubbed the pattern the post-divorce wild woman stage. Okay, these women, they tried to be good girls. They got married young, they had families, and then for whatever reason, it didn't work out. You know, so they get divorced and they find themselves single once again. And they're like, hmm, I tried to be a good girl, and that didn't work, so fuck that nonsense. I'm going to the other end of the spectrum, and I'm gonna be a wild fucking whore. And the battle cry of the post-divorce wild woman is, I must experience every single sexual act that exists before I die. So of course, right off the bat, it's just dick, 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 dick. But the longer they stay single, they just have to keep on upping the stakes, you know, so it's just gonna get weird, it's gonna get kinky, you know, so they're gonna be having threesomes and foursomes, they're gonna go to swingers clubs and BDSM clubs, they're gonna go to orgies, they're gonna get gang banged. Any time goes by, they have to just up in the stakes, you know, so then they're like dogging strangers in a rest area. After a while, they're like kind of out of ideas. I think I'll just start dabbling in prostitution. Not because I need the money, but because I have a vagina and I think I should get paid for it. And meanwhile, what are the men doing? Are they keeping up with all of this craziness? Fuck no. Men are so much simpler. Most men have one fantasy, which is as long as I have one threesome with two women before I die, I'm a fucking stud. Uh, oh, I skipped over the baby section. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, nothing sacred. I was actually wondering the other day, you know, like, I don't have any kids, but I know plenty of people who have kids. And I was thinking, how come no one gives shit to babies? How have they gotten away with this for so long, like, just going under the radar? I say, let's give the babies some shit, all right? Well, like I said, I don't have any kids, but I can imagine what it would be like. I'm lying in bed with my woman, and of course it's the middle of the night, and the baby starts crying. I'm like, it's okay, honey. I'll go take care of the little angel. Go walking down the hallway into the spare bedroom. Look down into the bassinet, baby's just wailing and screaming, bag of shit tied around his waist. It's like, hey, baby, you and I, we need to have a little talk, all right? That pussy down there, that used to be my pussy, okay? Your mother and I had an agreement, okay? The agreement was she keeps it clean and I keep it well maintained. And I was in there and on it every chance I got, using everything I've got. And then one day, you just shot in there. No one even noticed, okay? You were microscopic. You just went right past the breezeway and took over the main house. And you show up, you're like, hey, look at all this space. I could totally live in here. And right off the bat, what do you do? You go sniffing around and you violate your mother's egg. 
Yeah, you raped your mother's egg, you little bastard. And then the two of you just morphed into this little alien that nobody could identify. And what do you do? You just grow and grow and grow. And every moment of every day, you just keep growing. Pushing your mother around, stretching her out. No respect for your mother whatsoever. And then you just keep growing and pushing and stretching and pushing and stretching. So finally, there's just no way you can't push her around anymore. You gotta get out. So you bust your way out. You fucking wreck the place on the way out with your giant vagina smashing pussy grenade bulldozer head. You fucking wreck the place. So what's the first thing that happens to you? A stranger grabs you by your ankles, holds you upside down, and spanks you. Why? Because you fucking deserved it, that's why. And then they clean your own filth off of you and they put you on your mother's chest. And what's the first thing you do? You're like, well, I just crushed the pussy. I guess I'm gonna trash the tits. And you just jump on it. Nah, 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 nah. Fucking fast and hard right out of the chute. Baby, let me give you a little advice. Slow your fucking roll. That's not the way you treat a lady, okay? Use your little baby hands. Give your mom a little caress. Let her get a little nipple erection first. Make it fun for the two of you. Then you can go ahead and feed yourself. But you always go too far. You go too fucking far. You suck the goddamn life right out of her. Your mother's breast used to be so firm and perky. Her nipples just stared in the eye and said, Squeeze me, Mike! Now they just, they're all saggy and wrinkly. They just stare down at the ground. The nipples are about all chewed raw. They look like leather that's been left out in the sun for too long. You fucking ruined her! I should tie you up in a bag full of snakes and pour you to damn river. That's why I don't have kids. I'm not done, I just need some water. <laughs> Alright, you're taking this well. You're taking it well. I am kind of nervous. If I end up hitting the deck and having a heart attack, keep three letters in mind. DNR. Do not resuscitate. Okay, the last thing I want is to be floating towards the light, going, yes, Lord, yes, I'm ready, and then be snatched back here, end up on the ground with some guy trying to blow me up like an old-fashioned sex doll. Just leave me alone. If anything, get a few of you together, pick me up, and throw me in the dumpster. Get on with your own lives. <laughs> now, this used to be a hot topic, a hot-button topic. Hopefully, people have relaxed a little bit. I don't have a problem with the topic. Do whatever the fuck you want with yourselves. It doesn't make any difference to me. But transgender people we seem to be having a hard time over the last couple of years. No. Not a joke at all? You can make fun of babies, but you can't make fun of adult transgender people? Correct. Wow! Welcome to America. Okay. So, patience is a virtue, but it's not a virtue that I was blessed with. The other day I was waiting in line, and I hate waiting in lines. I always get all bitchy and pissy, thinking, what the fuck are all these fucking people doing the same fucking thing I want to do on the same fucking day that I'm doing it? Fuck you! I'm like, well, that's not the best attitude. Just relax, Mike. There's not really a punchline to that, but the next time when you're in line, you're going to remember it. Has there ever been a time in history better than right now to be a slut? I mean, with all these, like, apps on the phone, it's got to be just so easy. I figure I'm getting old, but I had to give it a shot, you know? So I go to the app store and I download comefuckme.com, and I get on there, and I find some woman nearby. She's like, yeah, come on over and fuck me. I said, uh, okay. So I drive on over there, and I'm park parking my car, and I get out, and there's a line around the building. I say to some guys, I'm like, hey, what's up with the line? He said, Cheryl. <laughs> the passenger seat in my van was squeaking, which just driving me fucking nuts. So I was thinking, I gotta get some bitch to like shotgun with me, just to hold the seat down. So I go looking around, and I found one, I got a good one. That got me a big, beautiful black bitch. She holds that seat down so nice. She's a Newfoundland. You got one over here. This is just a pet peeve that I, I ran into the, today. Why do so many places have double doors and then keep one of the doors locked? I always find them in convenience stores. It's it's stay it's Yours is open. Drag. Oh, oh, I thought, no, no. I was gonna say, the door is no, you're, you're, all, you're all set, so you're, you're good, but so many, like over 50% of these stores, you walk in, I think you always stay to the right. So you walk in the right, you go in the store, but now you get stuff. Maybe you get a cup of coffee and you get a few things in your hand, and you go out the right door. It's just, the fucking thing's locked. It's like, why? Why have two doors and keep one of them locked? What's the fucking point? Do you normally keep that thing locked? No. Good for you. <laughs> no, but people <laughs> use favor one of them to the point that it... 
acts like it's locked sometimes, so people are... Okay, that adds to the joke. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm coming to the game late, okay? Again, I thought there was going to be a bunch of other comedians here, and I was going to point out that I can't, like, I don't have the time that these young guys have. I can't take 30 years to make a career. I need to start making some money right now, all right? So I'm going to need you all to use your imaginations. Pretend I'm a young, handsome guy. I've got like a really athletic, ripped body, and I'm wearing a G-string, and there's a brass pole here, and I'm swinging around on it. Now I'm gonna need you all to come forward and throw 100 bucks on the ground. I feel bad for you people. You have no fucking imaginations whatsoever. That's coming from a half crippled, three quarter crazy, homeless drunk pitying you. How does that make you feel? Good, all right. Minimum wage, okay? Who makes minimum wage? Nobody, nobody wants to admit it. Nobody thinks it should even exist. But I think there's one job that does deserve minimum wage, and that's psychotherapist. All you do is sit in a comfortable, climate-controlled room listening to people. And every once in a while, you just say, hmm, how does that make you feel? How does that make me feel? It makes me feel like you deserve fucking minimum wage, okay? And if they say something that's actually helpful and useful to you, tip them. Be like, hey, I like what you said about my second grade teacher. That really hit home with me. <laughs> Here's next to five spot. See you again next week. My name's Mike Harden. That's all I got. No transgender joke. Wow. No. No, we can have a discussion about that after. <laughs> Is there a Delaney here? Oh. 